uh, first our prophecy update, and then uh, tonight we'll finish the book of Hosea. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all your blessings and your goodness, Lord. We thank you for the cross and the blood of your son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that his grace is sufficient for us today. And we're not to take worry about tomorrow, Lord, but we're to uh, focus on today, for there's enough trouble for today. We ask you, Lord God, that we would not be anxious, Lord, but we would totally and wholly rely on you. And we ask you for your grace tonight to understand these things, Lord, to apply them to our lives, but also, Lord, to live for you. Give us that courage and strength to live in an ungodly world, Lord, live in godly. And we thank you that your grace supplies all of our needs, Lord. We ask you for your spirit to lead and guide tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a reminder, to the, this weekend we have our women's uh, one-day conference, 9 a.m. Be here on Saturday. And we have wonderful speakers, wonderful fellowship. Um, the food's all right, but you can come. I actually have no idea what the food is, but uh, I heard it was good. Um, but more or less, let's jump right in. More and more, um, the news that we pick up and see uh, that is related to Bible prophecy has to do with the persecution of believers. And um, not just in the persecuted world, as we would say the Middle East, Africa, things of that nature, but more and more happening in Western countries. This particular one... Um, she was killed on, um, on Good Friday in, in uh, Jerusalem, Hannah Bladen from England. Um, I actually know someone that knows her family, and um, she's a, um, what, what they told me is that she was a wonderful believer who was there during Passover week, during uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. And on Friday, on Good Friday, uh, a Muslim man, a 57-year-old Arab resident of Jerusalem, stabbed her uh, to death on a bus. And despite having 3,500 security personnel in Jerusalem itself just to avoid any conflicts because of the Christian and Jewish uh, holiday, they still went ahead and pulled off this heinous crime. Uh, they, um, they basically uh, tried to get her to the nearest hospital, but it was, it was too late for that. Um, she's pictured there, and she was uh, stabbed in her chest several times, and they just didn't have enough time to get to her. And um, uh, the family's devastated, but they um, related to the fact that she's with the Lord now. And, um, you know, her death, she, re she would remember, as something that Christians all over the world are going through, and specifically in Jerusalem, where Christians are not or Christians and Jews are being attacked. Now, Matthew 24 is one of the passages that we look at uh, quite often. And in Matthew 24, we read a few weeks ago about the four major signs that the Lord gives us. And in Matthew 24, uh, in 25, which is the, uh, the Olivet Discourse, we see that Jesus gives four signs, four major signs. Uh, there's sub, there sub, uh, subcategories of each sign, but where they are, where they happen, it's really the most interesting part about the signs. The first sign that we looked at quite heavily was the, in the world. There'll be wars and rumors of wars, and there's earthquakes and famines, and all these things are the beginnings of sorrow, Jesus said. But don't be frightened. Uh, these things have to take place, but the end is not yet, and nation will rise against nation, uh, literally ethnic groups against ethnic groups, and kingdom against kingdom, that would be the equivalent of nation-state, what we would call them today, and in various places, famines and earthquakes. We talked about that, and we'll talk about that today, too. Uh, but here's the second sign, and it's the one that um, we talk about it in general here, uh, but sometimes it's not talked about in general in the Christian world, because it's, it's obviously something we don't want to hear, and we don't want to talk about, and we don't want it to happen. Uh, neither do I, but it's something Jesus said. In verse 9, he says, the second sign will be in the church. And he says, they'll deliver you up to tribulation and will kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations in account of my name. Uh, tribulation, the ellipsis. Um, there's obviously um, various types of teachings in the church today that the Christians won't go through tribulation. Jesus said, there will be tribulations coming upon you. It's ellipsis. Um, and will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations. 
uh, this specifically dealing with the Gentile world, uh, as the disciples were, were Jews, hated by the Gentiles, but Christians hated by uh, the nations, account of, because of account of my name, and that many will fall away and will deliver up to one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and mislead many, and because of lawlessness increasing, most people's love will grow cold. Or another translation will say the love of many will grow cold. But one who endures till the end shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in, uh, in the whole world for a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. And it's the persecution of believers. Jesus said, you know my return is near when you will see these four signs in the you will be able to visibly see the signs. One will be the, in the world, there'll be wars and rumors of wars and false prophets. Um, I'm sorry, false messiahs. There'll be false messiahs in the world. Uh, there will be people claiming that they will be the savior to the world. And it, it talks about in here that they'll deliver you up to tribulation and you'll be hated for my name's sake. Now, this happened to the early church. It happened to Paul. It happened to the disciples. It happened just as... Jesus foretold it would happen. It happened to Jesus. Exactly what happened to Jesus happened to Paul. If you look at Jesus' life and Paul's life, they all went through a very, both of them went through a very similar time where they had to stand before the Sanhedrin. They were slapped at their trial. They were falsely accused. They brought false accusers before them. And eventually, just like our Lord, Paul was eventually martyred. But he was able to preach for, for quite a bit of time, but he knew that time had, uh, will come, and he had already accounted the fact that um, you know, the chains will be upon him, and he will bear the marks of Christ. But this happened to the believers in the early church. It happened to all the apostles, except for John. And it happened to the first century church, second century church, and has happened throughout church history, a persecution. But then Jesus said, It'll be, toward the end, it'll be an increase, and it'll be a major sign that you'll be able to see it. No one will be able to tell you, like, hey, this is, this is not happening, or it's always happened. It will be a definite sign. Now, an interesting thing, and I'll just go to the next slide here, is the fact that uh, on April 9th, this was at a Christian conference in South Dakota, Sioux Falls, uh, which, by the way, is a sanctuary city. Uh, in Sioux Falls, uh, a man standing on a parking lot, or in a parking lot, made a video, thanks to Facebook Live, and uh, th those things are becoming a trend. If you've, if you've seen the news of people using Facebook Live to um, sort of tip off what they're going to do or uh, commit horrible crimes, uh, as that man in Cleveland who killed that 73-year-old man in cold blood murder. Uh, but this man, Ihab Jabbar, uh, who was wearing a shirt, says, I'm an American, I'm a Muslim. He made a video in the parking lot saying that, you know, you need to be scared, you need to be afraid, and he flashed all his uh, weaponry uh, in the parking lot of a Christian conference. This was in a hotel in Sioux Falls, and the Christian conference had about 500 people in the conference. And, um, you know, he, he was making this video saying, I'm going to go in there, and uh, I, I hate these Christians, and he used very foul language, otherwise I would have shown you the video, but... It's hard to edit uh, that many foul words. And, um, and he says, you should be terrified. And he flashed his, uh, his weapons, which included uh, five pistols, AK-47, an AR-15. And um, he actually went into the conference, but he was, a, he was, a, he was visible. And they, um, they asked him what he was doing here. And he left without any, any issues, except for the fact that he had made this video. And um, they, he... He was escorted out. Nothing happened. However, um, nothing happened to this man either. And so he was able to make this provocation, uh, call for uh, the killing of Christians, but nothing really happened to him. And so the, the Christian conference, which, by the way, it's, uh, if you guys know, it's, it's called the Worldview Weekend. It's Brandon House, which I, I, I know who he is. And uh, uh, it's a very well-attended uh, conferences. They have lots of speakers and things like that. And um, nothing happened to him. So the South Dakota Police Department has really done nothing against it. So I'm asking the, you or anyone that is uh, um, willing to call uh, to um, 
call for um, the, the, the South Dakota Attorney General uh, to uh, bring charges against this man and to uh, not to allow the police to, um, to just sort of sweep it under the rug because this was a uh, quite a bit of threatening. Can you imagine a white heterosexual Christian, quote unquote, doing this outside a mosque? They would arrest all of us <laughs> just because of the fact that he was a white Christian guy. But the fact that Muslims can threaten Christians, can actually do this, do it on Facebook Live, broadcast it, and nothing's done against them. It is absolutely a heinous crime by the um, Sioux Falls District Attorney's Office. And um, this is what happens in Europe all the time. This is what happens in Sweden all the time. Uh, places like in Stockholm, places like Malmo. This is, this is common stuff. In fact, uh, uh, Europe is it's ready for, uh, in my opinion, an uh, all-out war uh, between the European community and the Muslim community, uh, mainly charged by the Turkish uh, backing, because these things, um, they're calling for mass immigration of Muslims into, uh, into Europe by Turkey. Uh, which, by the way, we'll talk about that. Um, Erdogan won narrowly, so there's a lot of stuff going on in Turkey because many people don't agree that he has almost full dictatorship power. Um, but he was holding a Koran. He was uh, had a shirt that says, "I'm a Muslim," and um, he was approached, and he then was escorted out. This is at a Christian conference. This is at a place where. Uh, there was lots of believers in there, and I could have only imagined if he had carried away that uh, his his original plan. Now, um, nothing's been done, but I, 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 you know, whoever watches this video, to do that, to call and to say, hey, this is should not be allowed, should not be tolerated. Now, in Egypt, we know that on um, the week leading up to Passion Week, what we call Passion Week, or uh, the week that the, our Lord was crucified, uh, there were several attacks in Egypt. Now, what we don't know and what we didn't hear are the other attacks that happened in India. The Prime Minister of India condemned the killing of Christians in Egypt by Muslims, uh, but he did not condemn his own country's attack on Christian churches, and it happened in five different locations. Hindu extremists, so these are Hindus, not Muslims, who came and disrupted church service, arrested the pastor, their wives, uh, took them to the local police stations. They were detained in another place called Harana. Hindu extremists disrupted the church, uh, threatened and manhandled Christians. Police then took Christians into custody. Um, I don't know why, but the, nobody knows why they took the Christians into custody, not the aggressors. The local inspector said they had been in protective custody against the allegations, uh, and they were released after the allegations against them were found to be baseless. So they were making up stuff about Christians being in, in India that they're doing um, not so nice things to Hindus. And um, in another place called Uttar Pradesh, a mob beat up Krishna Paul, the leader of the Believer's Church, and handed him over to the police. He was released after local leaders intervened and spoke to the police. Hindu extremists in another place disrupted the service at the Church of God and he, uh, the pastor or church leader was arrested. Um, all these church leaders and pastors are arrested. You know, this, is, this is what happens to pastors and leaders. So, um, you know, when I read this stuff, I'm not just like telling you like, oh, by the way, it's somewhere way out there. Um, you know, I take it very serious. This, is, this is happens to believers and it happens to leaders. Along with seven other Christian local villages and help of the Hindu priest, with the help of the Hindu priest, they have complained that the village chief that Christians have been winning people to the Lord and engaging in conversions, and they couldn't have that. So the village chief then assigned a complaint, and the police came and arrested the Christians. Um, one other place, a government official disrupted the prayers of uh, believers and, um, at the house of a man named um, Wana Sekaran. I think that's how you, spell it, how you pronounce it. The official's video took, uh, they took video and pictures of people praying and told them to stop. And they also uh, told them to ask permission from the government before they prayed. And uh, there was about 20 people in total. Uh, uh, they had gathered together for prayer. And they were forced to sign a piece of paper and told that the report to the local government's office the following day. 
So this was reported by the Christian news and Christian organizations that are helping persecuted believers uh, throughout the world. So the hypocrisy of the prime minister of India to say condemn the attack on the Christians in Egypt, but then have nothing to say about the fact that five different churches in five different locations, Christian churches were, uh, people were arrested, Christian leaders were taken into custody, they were told not to pray, they were, uh, they were taken into police under protective custody, and they were asked to sign pieces of paper not to do this, uh, not to pray in Jesus' name, because they were converting many, Muslim, uh, many Hindus. Now, that's in, that's in India, and these are things that are happening but um, there's also persecution of, um, at, the, um, at the legal level. Uh, this man here, his name is Vance Day, Judge Vance Day from Oregon, Marion County, Oregon. And uh, he's been well known to be a believer, an outspoken believer, but he's a judge. And so he's being sued for five times his salary in order to step down from the bench for no other reason except that he's too conservative and too much of a Christian. Um, and to make matters worse, felony uh, criminal charges has been brought against the judge as well. Uh, he refused to perform same-sex marriages instead of opting to have his staff refer to couples to another county. And as a result, they've been ganging up on him to the point where he's been, um, he's been, they've been trying to get him to step down. So um, as you know, Oregon is a, a very lovely place. Um, um, geographically and topographical is very lovely. Uh, I couldn't give you five cents for their political stuff. Uh, I live in California, so that tells you how much I think of Oregon. Uh, but it's very blue, if you know what that means, very blue, very liberal, and, um, and you know, Christians not apply, need not apply. So something's happening in the world, and, and if Jesus is right, we would see this. If Jesus is right, we would see not just the persecution, but even in the, in the book of Luke, it tells us that they'll bring you before the courts. They would even bring you before the courts. And that's happened to Christians throughout history. But even in our lifetime, you see Christians as this man, as others, uh, the lady at the flower shop in Washington who um, did not want to participate or did not agree uh, with homosexual marriages were brought to that point where she was sued. They're still fighting through. And many other Christians bakeries, photographers, uh, but even a judge, even a well-respected um, judge is um, not immune to these kinds of things. So we see persecution, physical persecution, an attack on Christian churches throughout the world. Uh, Christians single, you know, just, just a, a, a young lady in Jerusalem. You would think Jerusalem, the city of peace, that's what it means, um, murdered on a bus. You see Christians being attacked, being this place for their homeland, and in America, of course, even threatened. Facebook Live, Periscope, people making videos, and um, we'll have the other one did not pertain to Christians in a sense, but there is one that happened last night. Uh, I believe it was last night uh, in Fresno, uh, the man shouting uh, "Allahu Akbar" and killing three people uh, because they were white, and uh, you know he. Um, said the white people were the devil, and he was going to kill them. And, and he did. He killed three, um, three people that were uh, Anglo-Saxons. So um, let's continue. We'll, we'll finish at the end because we've got to get through it. Getting ready for war. This is still happening, even though on Sunday, and, and i got to tell you, on Sunday, it was a wonderful time. It was incredible. I loved it. Worship, uh, prayer, the kids. I didn't want to leave. Uh, you know, we gave the message. Mark gave an incredible gospel presentation, and uh, it, it, it was amazing. But inside of me, I was going, "Oh Lord, please, not on Resurrection Sunday," because we were been told that North Korea was going to um, show off their nuclear weapon, and uh, of course, they 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 launched one, but it failed miserably. Uh, now, many people say it was just a, a test, it was just a dummy, it was just something that, uh, to show off uh, that they had the capabilities, but it wasn't gonna, they weren't going to do anything. Uh, but we were very close to a launch of a war, very, very close. Had that thing gone, whether it landed in the Pacific Ocean or landed in parts of Japan or landed somewhere near a base, it would have been retaliated. We've been told already by 
our government, by the H.R. Uh, McMaster, by the people in charge, by uh, Trump's administration, that if they threaten our bases, if they threaten North, uh, South Korea, Japan, or any one of our allies, they will shoot down that missile. They will shoot it down. Now, that will create a uh, sort of a ricochet effect, because you have China, you have Russia, you have North Korea, you have Iran, and they can take that opportunity to also attack uh, our bases. They could also attack our military, um, our military in those countries, like uh, South Korea and Japan. So uh, this still continues because he's promised to launch one, uh, once a week, he's promised to test missiles. And he's been told, you launch one of these, no matter where it goes, we're going to shoot it down. Now, there's lots of things on the internet that, you know, sometimes you don't believe. You have to, you know, it, it's interesting. Either, I mean, there's so much fake stuff that's happening. People get caught up in, in really weird news. But um, one of the things that have, uh, our, our military has been depleted. It has been castrated for quite a while, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Obama. And uh, they're trying to get it, get it back up and running as quickly as possible. But you guys, some of you guys have military family, sons, uh, cousins, uncles, nephews, um, Andre, Ms. Tish. Um, who else? Military? Oh, yours, too. Okay. Your son. I didn't know that. Okay. Your son, Susie, right? Granddaughter's husband. Anyone else? Okay. Nephew? Okay. Um, part of my family, uh, uh, Air Force. So uh, they're not told anything, and they're pretty because they don't know until it's time. I mean, it's only like, even the high-end generals don't know until a week before. Um, but mobilizing that many, uh, that many people at one time is gonna, uh, it's gonna take some time. But they, they could tell you, like, look, our technology is great and we're far advanced, but it's not what, it, it's not what they make it out to be. Um, um, some of the people have come forward and said, you know, North, Co North Korea launches one of these things. We hope we can shoot it down. We hope we can shoot it down. I think we can. Now, when you hear things like that, I think we can. When you're talking about nuclear weapons, that's not very comforting. We think we can. Um, and, and of course, you won't hear it from the top end generals and things like that. And, and I've shown you videos here of guys who come out and say, we're going to kick your butt, Russia. We're going to kick. And it's like, pride comes before the fall. And the US hasn't won any kind of war since World War II. Uh, any of the conflicts, they, they've come out on the losing end of it. And, um, and, and of course, um, getting into wars and multiple sides, war, uh, multiple ends of the war, uh, Middle East, China, the China Sea, North Korea. Uh, so they, they, they have a, um, they already have a, um, a scenario where they can strike certain parts of North Korea. So this has already been laid out. Uh, not only their nuclear facility, their testing facility, their submarine base, and um, we actually have destroyers out in the South China Sea, which is the busiest place, one of the busiest places in the world. Um, but our, our, our Vice President, Mike Pence, um, who I personally like, uh, he has come out and said, look, um, this is a warning. Uh, you can't keep shooting missiles toward Japan. You can't keep shooting missiles toward the South China Sea. You can't keep threatening South Korea. And um, if you keep doing this, our patience is going to be over. Now, whether you agree with the war or not, um, the Lord said this is going to happen. There's going to be wars and rumors of war. I believe that people go into presidencies or state departments not really wanting to go to war. Some people are. I mean, there are some warmongers and neocons that are just crazy. But there are people that don't want this. But you know, you get in a scenario where it's inevitable. And it's inevitable because of the times and the seasons in which we live. Jesus said this would happen. Even if people get into the office and say, I'm not going to do anything about it, they get to a point where it forces the hand of an individual. And um, the Bible tells us in, uh, in the book of Revelation, it is the demonic spirits who go throughout the whole world urging countries and nations to come and fight. And uh, this is, of course, a, a plan of the devil, but it's also God for season. God knows it will happen. He tells us about it. Um, it's not God's will that this would happen in a sense of destruction of people and places and children, but it's simply stating that this is going to be the heart of man, to destroy each other, even to destroy the earth. If it were not, uh, um, 
if it wasn't for the Lord intervening, uh, this whole, the whole place would be destroyed. But that's how man is going to get to. Now, speaking of uh, despotic rulers, this man has come out again. And his name is uh, Ahmud Ahmadinejad. And Ahmud Ahmadinejad wants to run a third term, okay, uh, on the basis of death to Israel. We want to protect Iran. I mean, quite a thing, right? It's your platform is death to Israel. And he could probably win. He was very popular, but he was ousted. Um, and then another guy came in, and this man is probably more, in my opinion, personal opinion, I've never met him, but I've heard him speak. And I'll tell you things. I think this guy's demonically possessed. I have no doubt in my mind that he is, in my, it's my opinion, but once you hear him talk about destruction of Israel, he foments at the mouth. I mean, he, you see this video. You can go on Euro News, and he is salivating at destruction of Israel and the Jewish people. And he's saying, yeah, I could win. And this is a different time, and this is a different place, and, and Allah's going to give us the victory. Now, this is the same man who goes on to the, the UN about 2011, I believe it was, probably 11 or 12, and he said he spoke to the Mahdi. Now, the Mahdi is a, uh, their, their version of the Muslim Messiah. So the, we, have a, we have Jesus the Messiah. They have a Mahdi, their version of the Messiah. And uh, he's somewhere in a well, hiding in a well somewhere. And it's true. That, 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 that's what they believe. He's waiting for the right time. He's the 12th Iman. He's going to come out. And he's a Shiite. So sort of their eschatology is a little bit different than some of the Sunnis, but um, uh, work with it. That's what he believes. And he believes that, okay, so he's at the UN, and he, he just talked to him. He had this prayer meeting where the Mahdi talked to him. And all of a sudden, a green sort of light shines through the UN, and, and uh, through, the, through the glass in the UN, and it shines right on the podium. And there were Muslim leaders who said that, that it was like the Mahdi was speaking through him. Uh, and, and so he confirmed it, that he believed that he was taken over by the Mahdi to speak these things. And it was death to Israel, death to Christians, death to the U.S., death to everybody except for Iran. And uh, we're going to bring the Mahdi and we're going to bring uh, you know, the caliphate and we're going to uh, usher in the time of Islam. All these incredible, crazy things. But they're not crazy because he believes it. And he has nuclear weapons thanks to our State Department. And he has better nuclear weapons now, or former State Department, I should say, um, he has more and better nuclear weapons than he had back when he was president because we've actually uh, donated quite a bit uh, to their facilities. And so after two terms, uh, he was forced out, but because he's such a hardliner uh, and he thumbed their noses at the Western countries uh, regarding the nuclear plan, Iran's nuclear plan, he believes he could win. And so... Um, you watch the video, you look at his eyes, and you go, something is definitely wrong with this individual. And that individual with nuclear weapons is very, very dangerous. Now, the trajectory of these wars, it seems to be that even though North Korea seems to be at the forefront of this um, attack that we're going through, uh, Iran is really the, the end. Iran's really the end goal of this because they can't have Iran in five years have that, have that many nuclear weapons. They have to do something about it. And they know that, and it's a hard-pressing situation. I don't know what I would do if I knew that there was despotic rulers like this having nuclear weapons threatening Israel in the US. And um, more or less, he wants to run. He feels like he could run and win, and this is May 2017. So in about a month, we will know whether this man, in my opinion, demonically possessed, will win and have control of several nuclear um, arsenal. So much prayer for that. Netanyahu has come out and said, look, war is unavoidable because Hamas, in, uh, so this is in Gaza, so war in Gaza, which is the southern strip uh, near the Mediterranean, it's inevitable. This has to happen because the humanitarian situation could not be improved because of Hamas. So Israel's looking at the people in there and going, this is... This is this is a ghetto. This is a terrorist ghetto. Uh, and we can have people with rockets next to our homes in Gaza, because uh, Gaza borders up part of Israel. So the, the, that's the beginning of Israel. Remember, it was given to Hamas about 2006. And Hamas takes 70% of the money that comes into Gaza and reinvested 
uh, to threaten Israel militarily. So the people are in the same, if not worse, conditions than it was in 2006. They take the tax money that you work for, that you work really hard for, comes out of your paycheck, you look at it and you go, how did I make this much money now? And they, we have given tons and tons of money for humanitarian aid. Um, now I don't mind helping individuals, helping families and things like that, but it should not be for terrorist use, and which is that's what Hamas is doing. So all the money from the UN, from the US, from everywhere that comes in, 70%, uh, and that's conservatively, goes to militarily in, reinvest against Israel. So it says, this is inevitable. We have to do something about it. And of course, the U.S. has already um, ready to have Tomahawk missiles near the Sinai Peninsula. So the Mediterranean is just a little bit north. And see how close it is to Israel right there? So ISIS, uh, for ISIS in Sinai. So there's ISIS groups in Sinai area, Sinai Desert. And uh, the U.S. is bringing Tomahawk missiles through the Mediterranean to launch against ISIS. You know what the... Our State Department did last week um, with the Moab, the Moab, the, what they call it the mother of all bombs in Afghanistan. Now, Iran continues to vow to destroy Israel. So it just unveiled their new missiles. And, um, and of course, on the missiles itself, it says death to Israel, both in Hebrew and in Farsi. So it... Uh, uh, they make no bones about it. They're going to go after Israel. This is, these are specially made um, missiles with the point of destruction of Israel. So they unveiled them. So North Korea did it on Saturday. Sunday would have been Sunday for us. They did it on this past weekend, uh, probably Sunday to Monday. And the ceremony was held in Tehran, which is their capital, on National Army Day. Um, and this is one of their missiles, Death on to Israel. And um, I remember these days. I grew up. I grew up in Nicaragua. I grew up in a communist country. This was normal. The, the, this Army Day thing. You know, show your weapons. That when I was a kid, they never had anything like this. This is this is beyond. This is like uh, Star Wars compared to what uh, what I saw. But it was sort of the thing to do. It was to show off how much military power you have. And you normally had like Russians and Cubans and things like that. Usually, a despotic, crazy man like Fidel Castro would go there. And, 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 um, and parade over the thing. He was nuts. He was crazy. I don't even know why people hold, herald him as a hero. He was a, a murderer, more or less. That's what Iran exactly does. Now, on May 3rd, there's going to be a summit in Washington. Abbas, Trump, and Netanyahu uh, for peace. Now, we don't know how long it's going to go. We don't know if it's going to even happen. But according to um, many of the officials, Abbas is ready to meet for peace. There's no confirmation yet whether the meeting will happen, but it's stated on the calendar on May 3rd. What is that? Uh, is that a Saturday? Is that a Sunday? Monday? Anybody have a calendar? It's one of the days, right? It's got one out of seven shots of getting it. Um, it's a Wednesday. Look at that. We'll be here. So tune in for that one. Um, and um, by the way, it, what the most interesting part about all this is not the, just the peace part of it. It's just many of the things that uh, our administration is doing. It's, it's quite interesting. But the, the, the Jared Kirshner, uh, Jared Kirshner uh, element is really quite telling with no military with no Middle East policies, but, but he's in there trying to broker a deal. And uh, what's more interesting to me, he's an Orthodox Jew, and he's very well liked by, um, uh, by, the, by the Jewish world. He's very well liked by uh, liberals, which is always a uh, telltale sign for me. Um, but he is uh, in charge of bringing the, the, the pieces together. So we'll see how that works. Now, i got to move fast. Uh, Erdogan. He won on Tuesday, very narrowly. And uh, Turkey right now is on a three-state day. Uh, they extended it for three more days, state of emergency, because there's so many protests. He won narrowly, but what he wants to do is he wants to bring a caliphate, and he wants to be the caliphate that will look something like this. That's the goal. That's the old Ottoman Empire. If you remember your history class, hopefully you didn't ditch that day. Now it comes to now, now you need to study that again. Uh, which was um, pretty much broken up after World War I, but this is what they want that back. And, and of course, it includes most of Europe. 
uh, just maybe in the northern part, not as much, but it includes uh, Europe. And of course, this is Erdogan who's saying, look, I'm going to have military power. I'm going to have uh, the caliphate. I'm going to be the one who will usher in the Muslim golden age again. And um, he's got dictatorship power. And he wants to establish this kingdom, this Muslim kingdom, uh, which he does have the largest um, military power of any Muslim country. It's Turkey. It's the largest one. And uh, he will be extending the state of emergency because there's so many riots and so many things. But he's told Europe, you either let more migrants in or we're going to flood the whole of Europe. And Europe is bracing for something that uh, may be more devastating than what they think. But this referendum could signal um, you know, trouble for Turkey because there's a lot of people that don't agree with it. Um, we, of course, know what Erdogan does with people that don't agree with him. You saw last July... Uh, the, the, the coup that was trying to, um, trying to uh, get him off of power, and there were many, many Turkish people that died, including even his own generals. Uh, but we have to keep an eye on this. Now, this, is, this just happened right before I got here, so I had to put it in there because um, I had to confirm it. Um, twice in a week, um, we've had uh, Russian uh, planes, Russian bombers, uh, fly next to or, or by Alaska. And the concern is that this is, the, the, there. it could be a, um, some kind of, um, uh, not just for optics, but reconnaissance information, trying to uh, get back some information on, on where our military is in, in Alaska. But this is twice in the last week, more Russian, and, and I was coming here, and somebody texted to me and said, you gotta read this story. And uh, I pulled it up and I said, well, it's real. I mean, it's, 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 it's confirmed by different sources. And um, the amazing thing about it is, I don't think you're going to hear this much on CNN or anything like that, but uh, this is the second time. Uh, it was 35 miles, 35 miles off the coast of Alaska. And um, this is a Russian bomber. Second time this week. Now, what could they possibly be doing? It's not a drone. It's not reconnaissance. It's a bomber. So... We'll see, but much to be prayed for. Now, this is, uh, as we finish, this is something that was unique, and I thought it was interesting. There's a new show uh, called American Gods. Now, it's based on a novel. I don't know if there's anyone read the novel. I've never read the novel. I had to read about it, and I was almost like, this is a piece of junk, but people love this. And it's, 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 it's a mini series or some kind of series on, I think it's stars, the channel stars. I don't, I don't, I told you before, it's, I'm not, it's hyper spiritual, or anything like that. I don't watch a lot, a whole lot of TV, um, with the exception of the the news or something like that. Uh, so I have no idea what this channel is. Um, but the idea is based on a novel about uh, different gods that come together and they have different powers and different people worship them and different ideas. And it's got a, it's got a very uh, paganistic aspect of it in a modern way because they come in and they set up wars and people fight and then there's a lot of hypersexuality that they in induce men into committing and women into committing and the the title of this whole thing is uh, this is this is their thing it's what do you worship and you can go to this website it's called whatdoyouworship.com don't go on it but you can go if you wanted to and um, you can pick like what you like if you like sex click on here if you like War, you can look at this. If you like uh, you know, money, you can click on this. And then it's like a survey. And then at the end, it's like, this is the God that you mirror. And it could be an evil God. It could be the God of sex. It could be the God of war. It could be the God of uh, unity. Because there's like this, you know, this God that you can invoke. And it's got this unity of you know, all spirituality coming together. And, um, but it's made in such a way that it's fun. It's hip. It's cool. But it's tremendously gory. It is tremendously violent and hypersexual. And I go, this is, and I almost guarantee it's going to go very, you know, pretty much a high rating. And uh, it's based on a novel by Neil Gaiman. And it's uh, a lot of it on mythology and mysterious, uh, mysterious happenings of gods working within America, right? So I thought it was fascinating, the, the, the whole aspect of it. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think it's a crazy story. I mean, it, it's, it's nothing to do with anything except for it is representing something that it's already happening, and it's already happening. It's the fact that um, when, you guys remember the story I shared with you about the French Revolution. The French Revolution 
which happened uh, around the 1700s, was so bloody, was so unbelievably, it was so bad, um, the, the, the killings of thousands and thousands of people. And it happened because they wanted, um, there, there was obviously uh, King Louis and, uh, uh, and, and, and his kingdom was oppressing the poor and there was a sort of rebellion. But this was going to happen all over Europe. This was something that was going to continue on from country to country. And it was started to overthrow the monarchy and bring in you know, the peasants' revolt and all this stuff. It didn't happen in England. It didn't happen in the US. And you can read in history and go, wow, it's amazing. You know, it could have happened here. There were very much people that wanted it to happen here. There were revolts coming against the US and in England. And obviously, the history is not going to tell you why it didn't happen. But it didn't happen because there was a man in England and his brother, and it's John and Charles Wesley, who preached the gospel all throughout the area of northern England. So when this infusion of hate and trying to take over the monarchy came into England, uh, God had already anticipated that. And he spread the gospel all throughout England. And when those things began to happen in France, it never got to England because people were changed. People were transformed by the gospel. And there was peace in England. And they never went through the horrors of, of, of uh, what happened in the French Revolution. Same thing in America. George Whitfield, some of the revivals with George, uh, Jonathan Edwards prevented an even worse catastrophe than the Civil War. It could have been worse. It could have been a thousand times worse. But it was the gospel who prevented it. But once you push the gospel out, a vacuum is created, and what comes in, it's never good. It's either Islam, New Age, you know, a paganism, and we see the paganism coming back into America because now you have this incredible tribalism, this incredible racial attacks that are, are not just... Look, some of this stuff is it's funny, it's comical, uh, because you have people that never grew up. They still think it's 1960 at Berkeley, you know, singing All We Need Is Love from the Beatles. That's all they think it is. It's not the Vietnam era anymore. I've seen this. I, I walked through some of these areas in, uh, in Orange County where people were thinking it's 1960 and they're singing, you know, all these old hippies, you know, trying to revive flower power and all this stuff. Um, but now it's even more, it, it's, it's a whole new level. It's not the flower power and we're going to lay down and make love, not war. Is you don't agree with us, we'll attack you. You don't agree with us, you are the enemy. You are going to get attacked. And if you're white, forget it. Uh, now this is, this is, a lot of it comes from, um, uh, obviously, Hispanic gangs, black gangs, um, um, even Muslim gangs. But there's a fomenting of racial tension quite within our, within our country. And, and, and I'm not saying this is why, but it's the question. What does our country worship? Well, our country loves war, violence. We love bloodiness. We love uh, you know, tolerance. We love all kinds of things that are against um, the God of Israel. And this resistance movement that's coming along, it's completely terrorist. Absolutely. I mean, I've watched every single one of these uh, resistance attacks, right? These resistance, not even, they are attacks, but it's almost like we're resisting the government. Well, I don't agree with you. Oh, you're a hater, we're going to kill you, and you're white, and we're going to death to the white people. And that's what they, and, and it becomes a, and it leads to a guy like this. That's the guy who killed three people in Fresno yesterday. And, um, you know, he goes on his, um, don't mind the garb, but he goes on this, on Facebook Live, and he begins to record himself. And he says, you know, this is about reparation. This is about what they've done to the black people. And it's, the, the doom is going to increase. The white people are the devil. And then he goes and he attacks three people, three kills them, uh, targeted a Catholic charity while shouting, Allahu Akbar. And then he surrounded, sur surrendered himself to the police. So what kind of a gods do we worship in America? This is Fresno. What kind of thing that we see more and more? Uh, which, by the way, I, I totally believe it's, it's a civil war. It's already sort of underground happening in college campuses in places like uh, Berkeley and things like that. And this is, this is last week, uh, this past weekend, where uh, people have any other uh, disagreements becomes an attack. Uh, now, for the first time, I believe in America, you, um, if you disagree with somebody, you can get physically hurt, you can get killed, and the police are not going to do anything about it. 
they will let you be attacked. And that's what's happened to many, many people, that uh, you disagree and they actually will arrest you because as you provoked it. Because you, know, you, you put that hate thought in their mind by wearing a shirt or wearing a hat or, or saying the wrong thing. Um, and of course, it's, it's not just more than free speech. For Christians, it's to say the opportunity to share the gospel is it's, it's at stake. And that's what you see happening more and more in America. Uh, not only in England, when you had people get, being arrested um, for sharing the gospel, but here in America as well. Um, this kinds of attack. So what kind of a God do we worship in America? What kind of thing are we laid in? What kind of spiritual um, things are happening behind the scenes in America? Um, I think we have crossed that, that road where it, it's, it's, it's God has given over that, the nation to what they want. And they don't really want the Lord. They want all the other gods that will allow them to do all the sexual stuff, all the, all the money, all the power, all the violence, everything and anything except the Lord. And uh, God's hand of protection moves from places that don't want the Lord. And so we, the only way is for Christians to share, for Christians to be salt and light, for Christians to be um, visibly and vocally. And it's the only thing that's going to save any sort of society, any part of society is people being transformed by the Holy Spirit and the power of the gospel. That's the only thing that will do it. I think we've gotten to the point where uh, lawlessness is so bad. And that's what Jesus said. Lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. We can get cold toward this. We can become so angry toward people like that or other believers. And yet Jesus said, that's going to happen. It's inevitable, but make sure your love doesn't grow cold. Make sure you continue uh, with the love of Christ that doesn't, doesn't tolerate things, doesn't tolerate sin. The love of Christ does not tolerate sin. The love of Christ calls it for what it is and allows the opportunity for the person to repent and come back and not be judged. That's the love of Christ. Uh, but it's not to be silent. It's not to tolerate. It's to say that is wrong. That is sin before a holy God. And it, it deserves to be judged, just like me. It deserves to be judged. But you have an opportunity to repent and the same God who, judge, who will judge you, he will change toward you and forgive you if you turn away. But I think in America we come to that point. And I think as Christians we need to be aware of not only the danger around us, but the opportunities to bring Christ into the middle of those conversations. Otherwise, people stand no chance. And uh, the spirit of America, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's those, those things that that movie was showing all the different gods of America. It reminded me of the gods of Greek society. All these gods that they worship. And, uh, um, you know, Moses and Paul said all those gods, other gods, are demonic. They just basically worship demonic spirits. And allowing those things to influence our society and our kids. And so it's time to pray. Because we need the Lord's help and we need the gospel to be preached. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your grace tonight. Be with us as we see these things. Uh, Lord, it says in your word that a, a prudent man, a wise man, sees danger ahead and prepares. Lord, help us to prepare as you see fit. Um, help us to prepare spiritually. Help us to prepare emotionally. Help us to prepare, Lord, um, in your word and, and, and be uh, at all times praying and filled with your spirit. And Lord, help us to prepare physically. Help us to be aware that these dangers are happening because our nation has forsaken the Lord. And so, Lord, help us to um, return back to you, Lord, one person at a time, if it would be. Um, Lord, we ask you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Take heed that no man deceive you. Shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences. All these are the beginning of sorrows. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved.